Okie dokie. So, the uh, last video I did was really successful <laughs> when I did the short review of all Nikon cameras. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, Nikon lens brochure of all current Nikkor lenses and we're going to go over them really quickly but effectively. Uh, I more than anybody else on YouTube not only own most of these lenses, I've definitely tried all of them. Um, actually, the one exception, I think I tried it once, the 800mm Nikkor Prime, that enormous beast. I know I had my hands on it once. I can't recall taking test shots with it. So let's go over all the Nikkor lenses and uh, let's see what we can see. I don't, it's hard to believe I actually own most of these lenses. Um, certainly tried all of them. So the uh, DX Nikkor 10 to 24, okay, kind of, except it sucks. And the uh, new Tamron 10 to 24 has superseded it, and it's cheaper and it's better made. No way in hell on the 10 to 24 uh, Nikkor DX. I have that lens. The 16 to 35 f/4 Nikkor. This is one of those deceptive lenses, and Nikon has uh, several of them. It's kind of like the Paris Hilton of lenses. It's pretty, but ultimately it's gross and sleazy. The 16 to 34 f4 sucks. It's got distortion issues, vignetting issues. It's not that sharp on the near end and the far end. And nobody ever talks about it because, and I have this lens too, it's just, it's just not that remarkable. And it's huge and obnoxious and the design is pretty old and like I said, it's the Paris Hilton of lenses. It's really sexy on the outside, but ultimately it's a sleazy lens. <laughs> a sleazy lens. To 12 to 24 f4, much better than the 10 to 24. N not by much. Actually, the only reason the 10 to 24 was made is to uh, make something wider than the 12 to 24. However, all they did is just stretch it a little too far, and between 10 and 12 millimeters, it's really sleazy on the 10 to 24. 12 to 24 is. Uh, Way overpriced. It's been superseded by the Tamron, which is a lot cheaper and a lot better made lens. The 14 to 24, still an amazing lens. It does get an A. It doesn't get an A plus anymore. The Tamron 15 to 30 um, is uh, sharper. It's faster. It has VR. It has less coma, less distortion. Uh, at 14, also 224. There's actually a couple pluses and nuance of rendering between the, and I own both of those lenses. 14 to 24 still gets kind of an A, so uh, it's a good lens. It's uh, finer than frog fur, and it costs a lot too. I still would recommend the 15 to 30 Tamron over the 14 to 24. Now here's a lens that is the herpes of optics. It's the 17 to 35 2.8 uh, EDIF. It has some plastic polycarbonate elements in it. It's uh, expensive. Nobody uses it. It's always for sale on eBay. Really, really cheap. It's just, it's it's a hideous lens that I would not recommend in any way, any way, shape, or form. It's uh, the lens is an answer to a question that nobody was asking. The lens should have been discontinued some time ago. The 18 to 35 uh, a G series Nikkor. It is lightweight, it's sharp, it's really lightweight actually. It's incredible. Um, this is the tougher than woodpecker lips lens that I recommend it to everybody. This is the A number one A plus travel travel lens. It's, it, it's just incredible. It's A plus. It's uh, epic tits, the uh, 18 to 35. The 16 to 80. No way, no how. The 2.8 to f4, the uh, crappy kit lens, uh, the uh, the dirty wench, along with its brethren, the 16 to 85, 3556. Five, this is the faster version, the 2.8 to f4. Both of these are a pair of poo. This is the uh, herpes of optics. Um, this is the lens that everybody owns. Says, I, I get great images out of it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know what you're complaining about. It's like, how many lenses have you tried? Uh, <laughs> Both of these lenses suck. Um, both of these lenses, there's a pair of them. One's faster than the other. The 16 to 80 and the 1685, uh, as a pair, they're perfect. They're they're just as useless as the Pope's testicles. Useless, yeah. I hope you understood that one. Yeah, useless as the Pope's testicles. And here we go. Now, 
I almost never recommended DX lens. And this lens, I saw a few of these in great use shape for $500. The 17-55 2.8 EDIF Nikkor. It's an older design lens. It's all metal. It's made in Japan. It is the absolute tits. It's smoother than the wax crutch of a Swedish supermodel. It is amazing. It's what's filming me right now. I own a couple of these lenses. New, it costs a lot of money. I don't recommend buying a new one. There's tons of used ones out there since it's been around forever. You can get for five or six hundred dollars on eBay. Absolute finest value for your camera. Period. The image circle is actually huge. It works without any vignetting and much of its range, even on an FX camera. This lens is just flat out amazing and the best uh, place to throw your money. Period. A frigging goddamn plus. Okay, contrasted with the 18 to 105 is a ruddy, dirty dog. No way. Another piece of crap that Nikon quickly put together to fill out its lens spectrum. The 18 to 55 crap plastic lens with its crap plastic mount. Craptastically craptastic. The 18 to 140 3556 VRG garbage lens. No crap. Another 18 to 55, the 3556 ED2. Another piece of a key wrap, crap, crap, crap. All of these uh, four lenses, the 18 to 55 and its other version, the 18 to 140 and the 18 to 105, these are crustier than a petrified turd. Absolutely useless uh, beasts. 18 to 200 is actually a good lens, even though it's an ultra zoom. This is the VR2 version. Great tout, travel, general purpose lens. Someone just got in photography, they want a great entry lens. This one gets about a B plus. To an A, that one's great. 18 to 300, an absolute turd lens. Useless as an 80 year old hooker. Total garbage lens. Junk. Piece of crap. Uh, I have three of these lenses. This is the best value. You find these used often for like $200 or less. This is the VRG Nikkor 24 to 85. Absolutely the cat's ass. This is. Uh, Dolly Parton is to boobs what uh, this lens is to great glass. Great stuff. Um, the 18 to 300, another 3556, uh, excuse me, a DX lens. Piece of total crap. Uh, a really bad lens. Absolutely unbelievable that Nikon still makes this piece of crap, and it is older than poo. It is a D series screwdriver, the 24 to 85. So 2.8 to f4. That lens. This is not to be confused with the uh, G series 24 to 85. This is the original 24 to 85, and that's a piece of crap. This is a lens everybody thinks is awesome. This is another one of those Paris Hilton of lenses. It looks really sexy, but ultimately it's sleazy and gross. The 24 to 120 f4, the kit lens for the Nikon D750. Also for the kit lens for the. Uh, is this the kit lens for the uh, Nikon D500 as well? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, very familiar with the lens. It's horrible. It's abysmal. It's as obnoxious as the bright purple butt of a baboon. It's a sleazy ass lens. This is uh, like one of only two ultra zoom lenses that I could recommend. There's super zooms and there's ultra zooms. This is a 28 to 300 um, Nikkor. Now it uh, expands out about yet far. It's definitely. Uh, uh, I was going to make a joke there about phallic symbols inflating or something like that. It, it extends out pretty far. <laughs> it's actually a really good lens. I give it an A to an A+, plus, which is absolutely unheard of for an ultra-zoom lens, because ultra-zoom lenses, by their de very definition, suck. But this one not only doesn't suck, it's awesome. Now, Nikon came out with a new version of the 24 to 70. This is the VR version. It's bigger, it's fatter, it's more expensive, it's heavier, it's also less sharp, and it has performance issues. It's like, great, it's got VR, but it's also a piece of crap. Get the old 24-70 It's sharper, it's more lightweight, and you can find them everywhere. Really cheap. Give that lens an A. This is the de facto wedding lens, by the way. So, This is uh, one hell of a lens. This, uh, that lens is made... Uh, more Nikon shooters, more money than any other lens, period, vis-a-vis -vis weddings and portraiture. However, for portraiture, recommend a nice prime, but 2470 cuts it. The 55 to 200, 4556, the VR2 Nikkor, another piece of total crap. 
This is gross. This lens is as gross as a naked old man in a trench coat hanging out at the children's playground. It sucks. It, it's just jar it's just a garbage lens. Another 55-200, the EDIF, the older, cheaper, crap version. Even crappier than the the uh, the true one. There's the real version, which is crap, which gets an F-. And then there's a uh, the crappier version of the crappy, better one. Both of them is... Uh, Completely awful. 55-300, another total piece of crap. Here's an awesome lens. It gets an A, the 70-300. And not the new one, which is uh, set for video uh, series, uh, video use. It's uh, it's nature, the new 70-300, but this is the original. 70-300 uh, G series, Nick Or There's a lot of 70-300s. This is the G series, okay? You can find those everywhere for $300 or so. Absolutely excellent. Here we go. Here's the uh, toughest woodpecker lips lens from Nikon. The 80-200 2.8D series. Recommend always buying this one used for obvious reasons. It's tough as hell. It's built like a tank. It's made in Japan. It's made out of metal. It is the Epic Tits Optics from Nikon. And the only issue this lens has that everybody bitches about and they don't read their user's manual for this lens is you're not meant to use this lens close up. While it will focus in at 20 feet or so, this lens is not made to be accurate or used at 20 feet or so. This is not a close quarters lens, so that's a mistake everybody makes. Here we go. Now this is, uh, I don't have this in the catalog, but the new version, I have it. And it's really nice, and it does get an A or an A+, plus, but I don't recommend buying it. It's obnoxiously expensive. It's the 7200 2.8. Um, VR3, what I'm calling it. Anyway, it's the fluorite lens uh, from Nikon. Your 7200. I have that lens, the Tamron 7200 2.8 G2 is a uh, slightly faster autofocus, even a hair, hair, hair sharper than this lens is. I recommend buying that over this awesome yet insanely overpriced lens. 7200 F4. This is one sharp lens if ever there was a sharp lens. Crap, overpriced, junky, miserable, piss-ass waste of money. No way, no how. Nobody ever asks me about this lens because most people have the common sense to never even consider that piece of crap. This lens has had two versions. The old version and the new version. I heard the new version's been discontinued on Nikon Europe's website. It is a sleazy, scuzzy bummer of a lens. The 80 to 400. Once again, another Paris Hilton lens. It looks sexy on the outside. Ooh, an 80 to 400. Yeah, no. This lens is a pile of poo, F minus. Screw that lens entirely. Here's another lens that is just an absolute. T uh, this lens is obnoxiously expensive. And it is one piece of crap. I see them used everywhere. 200 to 400 F4 VR2 Nikkor. This lens is an answer to a question nobody was asking. It's overpriced, it's, 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 it's junk. A total piss waste. Unbelievable they even still make this lens. Here's the lens that is the the double D. <laughs> I should stop making these breast references. A plus 200 to 500 millimeter a fixed F56 Nikkor. I got two of these with VR. This lens is it's just awesome. Absolutely the cat's ass, the bee's knees, the um. Well, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich would be for peasants. Uh, if you ever had like a, a honey and cashew butter sandwich on toast, that would be like the upper crusty version of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for the average peasant. It would be honey and cashew butter on toasted rye. Did you ever try that? Ooh, this lens is incredible. Buy it. Don't think twice. 200 to 500 Nikkor. It's amazing they still make this lens. This lens is as old as I am. The design, the 14mm 2.8, it just sucks ass so hard. The 20mm, listen closely, 2.8. I have this lens also. I've had several. Sucks ass. Absolutely sucks ass. This lens is as useless as Stephen Hawking's in a basketball game. It just, it, it, it just, it sucks. This lens sucks. Um... Awesome, 20 millimeter 1.8G, absolutely epic A plus lens. 24 millimeter 1.4G, epic A plus. 24 millimeter 1.8G, I have all of these by the way. Epic A plus. 24 millimeter 2.8D, I give it a B. It's a good lens. It's cheap and dirty and fast and small. 
It's actually a really good lens. It's not awesome, but it's really good. It's a Nikon. Still makes that old lens. 28 millimeter, 1.8G. Actually, it gets like a B plus. It's good. It's not awesome. 28 millimeter, 2.8D. It's okay. It gets another B. They still make it. It's just like a cheap version of a uh, wide prime. 35 millimeter, 1.4G. Awesome. Gets an A plus. 35 millimeter, 1.8G. Epic, awesome, A+. Plus. Now this is the FX version of the 35 1.8G. The 35mm 1.8G for DX has a couple of plastic elements in there. It gets a B, but it's really, really cheap. You can get them used for like 150 bucks. It's okay. This lens is the Epic Tatas. This is an old lens. I got a couple of them. 35mm F.2 F D series autofocus Nikkor. It's a screw drive lens. They're 200 bucks all day long. It renders amazing, incredible for black and white. This lens gets an A+. It's really old, but it's incredible, perfect design. 50mm 1.4G. It's awesome. I mean, I own tons and tons of 50mm. On the scale, for me, it literally gets like a B+. Everybody else thinks it's an A+. But on the scale of 50 millimeters, it gets a B plus. It's not that great in rendering. There are a billion options that are better for less money. Really, it should get like a B instead of a B plus. That's what it really is. If someone is a true connoisseur of 50 millimeter lenses, which I certainly certainly am, this lens is eh, it's okay. Buy it cheap used. Don't buy a new one. 50 millimeter 1.4D. I've been making that lens forever. It's an A. Eh, no, it's not an A+. I mean, it's really, really cheap, though. You buy a used one of these for like $140. So, it's good. 50mm 1.8G. It's a special edition. Who gives a crap about that? Eh, this is the 1.8G. There's no way in hell you should buy that lens. No way in hell. Here's one you should buy if you want a 50 on the cheap. That's awesome. You can get them for 90 bucks all day long. It's a 50mm 1.8D series. It's 1.8D. It's a tiny little lens, it's lightweight, it's really, really cheap, and it's awesome. Here's a lens that deserves like a B plus to an A. I have it. It's a 58mm 1.4G. It's a specialized lens with incredible bokeh that will just uh, kind of mind-boggling. It's mind-bogglingly expensive, too. Um, it's actually a really weird lens, but in a good way and a bad way. I absolutely love the hell out of it. It's perfect for DX portraiture. You want a perfect portrait lens for your DX crop sensor camera? This is it. Um, 85mm 1.4G. No, it's pissy. Total waste of money. I give it a, like a C-. minus. Um, it's a total piss waste over the awesome. 85mm 1.8G, which is not only sharper, it renders better. It's a better lens. 85mm 1.4G lens, I don't know, what was it like? This so lens reminds me of a dead smashed lizard in your door jam. That's something Floridians and people near the equator have to deal with. You open up your door and there's all these dead smashed lizards in your door jam. Here's a lens that is the epic tatas of uh, lenses for portraiture. The 180 millimeter 2.8 D series. Uh, it's a screw drive lens. I got six of these lenses. It's just the absolute epic awesome. Literally the wax crotch of a, wax crotch of a Swedish supermodel of lenses. You can't go wrong. Here's a lens that is an answer to a question nobody was asking. The, the 180 millimeter is much better. I, I recently did it several videos in testing the 200 millimeter f2, and I know it's obnoxiously expensive. It costs more than a good used Chevy, a good used car. Um, it's huge. It's heavy. Uh, the rendering is flat, it's got too much glass in it, poor micro contrast. Great, it's got really shallow, nice shallow depth of field. The bokeh on it is very fluffy, like you've sprinkled milk on a front filter. Don't like it, I hate it. I give it an F. It is another one of those Paris Hilton of lenses. Well, it can't be bad. You know, it's huge and heavy and super expensive, and it's an F2, and yeah... This is a lens you put on your camera if you want to impress somebody. You, if you want to actually take pictures and do it quickly, grab a 180mm 2.8, which has far better micro contrast, far better bokeh, renders better, costs about one one thousandth as much. The 200mm f2 is a lens for people with more money than brains and dumbasses from Australia on YouTube that want to impress people that they have an expensive lens. Here's two lenses that are both epic tits. They're absolutely incredible. I have both of them, the 105mm F2 DC Nikkor. This is my idea of the best portrait lens on planet Earth. Screw you, it's over with. This is the portrait lens. 105mm F2 D-series Nikkor. Um, 
these are uh, DC Nikkors, by the way. There's all both these are the DC versions. 135 millimeter F2 a D series. D series uh, refers to the series, and of course it's a screw drive D series. But uh, they are DC Nikkor specifically. This is a 135 millimeter F2 DC Nikkor. A plus. Ah, I'm running out of uh, ability to speak here. Yeah, I got a few more pages to go. So let's continue this on in a second video, and we'll continue from there, okay? By the way, if you like this video, click the link below and make a small donation because I don't have affiliate links. I'm not out to scam anybody or screw anybody, and I'm not selling anything. So any donations helps or join my Patreon, you know, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Catch me in video number two.